Hello, I'm Dave. And I'm Rob. And welcome to episode 11 of The List Makers, where today's top five is top five console rooms. Mm. The List Makers is our monthly podcast from the Doctor Who show where we take a top five topic, each make our list without interruption, and then compare our lists and have a bit of a chat all in 20 minutes. This is our 11th episode, the first with a topic submitted by a listener. It is top five console rooms. Rob, your turn to go first. Make your list. Here we go. I don't know how this is going to go, Dave, so I'll just rip into it. Coming in at number five, I'm calling the Tom Baker Secondary Console Room. And maybe it's an odd one to pick here as it's so little, but it really used to fire my imagination. You had the TARDIS looking basically like it had always looked in most of Doctor Who, whether it was the first Doctor, the second Doctor, the third Doctor, the fourth Doctor. And suddenly you had this wooden, slightly gothic thing, you know, all varnished wood and a console that's all covered up with covers that have to be folded down before you can get to the buttons. You almost expect a bottle of gin to be behind one of the covers. It's almost like a drinks cabinet. And it's it's this kind of thing that would make me think about how the TARDIS could actually look different inside. And although it was weird that we didn't see this kind of thing more often, I think it's pretty damn cool in general. And it really stayed in my mind, you know, all these years. I also think it's this kind of look that's a precursor to how the McGann TARDIS console room looks, that old world sort of feel. So that's that's a cool sort of tie-in as well. Moving into number four, and I'm going to call the original console room, but with a twist. I'm particularly taken by modern takes on the original console room. So basically in colour and so white, they're they're brighter than white, you know, so well lit, so <laughs> yep. clinical. They feel like a super advanced time machine, even without being this over the top sort of design. So while I'm not dissing the original, original console room, if you can call it that, I think of that as being sort of a prototype. And when we see it done with modern materials and shot in high def color, it suddenly pops and you think even for just a moment, well, why on earth do we need other console rooms? This this just has a great look. It's like the first time you saw a, I don't know, a white iPod back in the day or something. Just <laughs> something that looks so clean and well designed and made for purpose, you know, that kind of vibe. So yeah, number four is the original console room. Uh, in at number three, I've got the 11th and 12th Doctor's console room because while I appreciate the first Smithy console room and what it was trying to do being all Jules Verne, mad scientist and angles and bright shiny copper and all this i feel this interior felt more like a traditional tardis console room it was it was less cluttered it felt symmetrical felt more metallic maybe a little more cold more machine like is probably what i'm thinking of and i quite liked that look and after regenerating into capaldi the console room didn't undergo a big revamp like oh we've got a new doctor we have to have a new console room i really appreciated that instead it was just reworked we got bookshelves we got chalkboards we got lab benches you know stuff that felt quite right for the doctor to have in there it's a console room i like a lot Indeed, it's my favourite of the modern era. You won't see anything from the modern era in my next two picks. So for the modern era, at least, this is number one. Uh, across all eras, it's number three. Moving into number two, I'm going with the McGann movie console room. The first time I saw this, I was just transfixed for, for two reasons. Part of me was actually saying, you can't do this. That, that's not the TARDIS. I wasn't thinking of things like the secondary console room from the 70s at that moment in time. I just felt... No, no, this is too big. It's too... Oh, it's not Doctor Who. On the other hand, though, part of me was really loving this big, bold, new thing. And I was like, what the hell? This is amazing. You know, it was all gothic. And I think what it gives the console room is space. You know, and it's an infinite ship. Why does the console room have to be some pokey little thing, you know, just behind the front door? Why can't the Doctor have a wing chair and some LPs here and, you know, some storage shelves over there and a console over there it just made sense and of course on a practical level i get why the set you know from 63 to through to 89 wasn't done like this but in universe it was like yes this is what it probably needed to be all along mm -hmm. you're number one in at number one it's the davison five doctors console <laughs> room now i've called it the five doctors console room but in reality it's essentially the fifth sixth and seventh doctor console room 
which is the console room of me becoming a big fan with the show and, and remaining so until the series ended. So it's got to be at number one. It's the console room of my youth, Dave, you know, although th- th- there's always this confusing thing with, you know, we had so many repeats here, you know, you, know, you think, well, what is the console room of my youth? It's, it's that one, it's that one, it's that one, it's that one. But no, I'm going to narrow it down to the fifth, sixth, seventh Doctor console room. And what introduced it was five Doctors. You know, the first time you saw it, it looked so amazing and advanced compared to what it was replacing. Davo walking around quite satisfied with himself, wiping it down with a rag. <laughs> All those buttons and screens, you know. It, it, it looked like what you'd need to control a time machine. It felt modern at the time. It felt good. And it's my number one. I actually predicted that would be your number one, and <laughs> I'm not shocked at all. That's a very good list, Rob. That's a very good list. And uh, look, I am declaring this episode a snaptastic episode. Oh, oh gosh, how many? Uh, three and a half. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Which I think is a uh, is a record. Okay, hit me with it, Dave. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it because uh, some of my, my my picks are different and some of my rationales are different. Uh, look, your number one is my number five, and that is what I've called the 80s console room. Mm-hmm. It is one of two console rooms that I look at and just go, they spent money on this, and it looks stunning. Yeah. Those, those monitors built into the console are just really, really effective, but the whole room looks wonderful the way it all works that the pillars are are properly done by then it's nice and gleaming the central column the time rotor if you want to call it that is is different and it flashes in that really cool way but it's it's got lots of cool buttons it's it's a wonderful sort of console and i watch it now and i still think it looks really good i think it has held up remarkably well Uh, it's just a shame that by the end of the mccoy era it was being used against a painted backdrop Mm -hmm. which is a shame Uh, number four you mentioned as the 11th 12th doctor console room i'm particularly calling it the 12th doctor console room because it is those extra capaldiisms that for me make this the best of all the modern era console rooms now i'm not a big fan of the modern era console rooms i think that the the whitaker one is abominable it is terrible i'm I'm not a big fan of the coral one it's a little bit too dirty they're all a little bit too dark i i I want the console room to be exciting and and full of tech Mm. i want it to be i want to be a little bit star trek you know like 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 rose in um the empty child i want a bit of trek in there yeah a bit of spark a bit of Spock, yeah, and and I think the Capaldi one, by having, as you said, that 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 slightly toned down um, sense, they haven't filled it with lots of pillars and stuff, but they filled it with a library and a gallery and a catwalk and 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 a lab, and yeah, I, I just think that makes it all work really well. It is my favourite of the new series console rooms. Mm-hmm. Number three, I'm also going for the McGann console room, and my reaction to this was very different to yours, Rob, because. I remember watching that movie for the first time in 1996 and just looking and going, wow, Mm -hmm. this is a console room where you have a real budget. And the central column merges up into the roof and they didn't go for what they they could have gone for, given this was 96. And and I've just said I like like, a bit of Spock, but I certainly wouldn't want all that next-gen DS9 touchy smooth console sort of uh digital th- sort of feel on the console room i, I, I carpet like it on the floor dave yeah I, I i like i like that little bit of sort of machinery about it i like the little dials i i, I like the, the the brass i i think that's what a console room should have and so i'm a big big fan of that i think it looks really spectacular number two is the one that you didn't mention at all and mm-hmm. that is the rani's console room oh Nice. Okay. Now, I'm thinking particularly from Mark of the Rani, sure. where I can remember watching this as a kid of six or seven and just looking at this and going, wow, mm. this is amazing. The The colours are different, that sort of rose pink. She's got those little dinosaur fetuses around the console. And then that central column that goes up with those two hoops. Now, I've been watching this story for 30-something years. I've read a lot of making of Doctor Who's. I've seen a lot of how movies are made i still don't know how they get those two hoops spinning around like that and then with the column going through the middle i just think that's amazing and it's stunning and and i think it's a great shame they weren't able to use it in time in the rani i assume it's an optical illusion look it 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 could well be i i i genuinely don't know and i i'm not sure i want to know i think it i just want it to be magical if if you spun it 
the the rings could be staying the same, but they'd look like they were moving, wouldn't they, if they were at angles to each other? But you spun it? Oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm interrupting. I shouldn't be doing yes, that. Yes, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. And look, no no surprises. The, uh, the half snap that I've given us is the original console room from the Hartnell era. Now, you you did do the, the modern iteration of it um, from stuff like Fugitive of the Jadoon and, and others where mm. it does look amazing. But I, I've particularly gone for the 1960s version. It is, again, an extraordinary moment that I don't think any of us can really capture again. That moment where you go inside a police box and there's this thing, mm. this big hexagonal console room. It's got that really cool central time rotor that's got all those devices inside that rotates itself and also goes up and down i mean just the the concept that when it's in flight this thing goes up and down is a really cool concept it's got the scanner it's got the fault locator it's got that great big thing that hangs in the ceiling that i'm still not quite sure what it does but it looks really (laughs) awesome um you know it's just a wonderful piece of 60s tech but but again the the fundamental design of the brokaki set is with us nearly 60 years later. It, it, all console rooms are still basically hexagonal and with a central pillar in the middle of them. So it has stood the test of time. It's got what I like on a console, buttons and levers and flashing lights and dials. Oh. I, I just think it's really quite amazing. Well, conceptually, when we talk about the shape, I don't think it was quite written in at the Hartnell stage but later on that oh you need you know multiple time lords standing at each bay around the console to to make it to fly it properly yes you know so I guess that's why they keep it now because that's now a thing yes I think it was the the uh, stolen earth and journey's end where um the doctor says yeah we need six people around it that's why it's working so well now Mm. um yeah look I I think that's quite wonderful uh look obviously a lot of snaps in our list uh, I think that that original design, whether you take it as the 60s or the remake, is is amazing. The the 80s one is amazing. One, one thing that's interesting for me, Rob, is that, of course, you've mentioned before we grew up in the period of repeats. Yes. So I actually saw the five Doctors on the repeat viewing. I'm sure I did see it on my dad's lap when it first went out, but I was about two. Mm. Um, so I remember it being on the repeat viewing at the end of uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. So I didn't quite get this idea that Oh, he's actually made the console for this special, um, <laughs> which is which is a bit of a shame. It just was the the Davo console room for me, and and in you fact, thought he was I, just giving it a bit of a buff. For I no did, reason. yeah, okay. absolutely. I thought I thought that Tig is just like, oh, thank thank God you've tidied the console room and dusted. You know, she was Someone very keen had spilled on a martini on it or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and in fact, I think I was, I was very shocked when one day, as an older fan, I suddenly realised that Davo only has that console for. A third of his time and he's got the 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 not very good one for t- <laughs> for two seasons and and look i've got to say i am nostalgically very fond of that late tom davo console with the big great big knob red door handle yes um but but looking at it now it does look a little bit tacky yeah yeah, the more high def our releases get, uh, the tackier it gets. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Um, a couple of runners up that didn't make my list are the Masters Tardis from uh, Plunder of Fire, particularly that that yeah. black version of the eighties. That's very cool, and I didn't include it because it never actually made it to screen. But the Mike Tucker concept Tardis that had the console suspended from the roof. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think is really good. And it was made for a series of Doctor Who repeats that were being um, chopped and tailed by Mc, uh, McCoy. And, and they made it as a sort of a little sort of, you know, one-eighth model they could pro- project on behind McCoy. And I think it's really quite wonderful. Um, if you don't know it, listeners, I'm sure if you Google Mike Tucker console room mm-hmm. or something thereabouts, it will come up. You know, you know, an interesting one that's just come to me that you could include here as a, as a runner-up. Anytime they turn down the lights in the TARDIS. <laughs> because it has a different look and feel and vibe. Yes. Well, Enlightenment's famous for that. Yeah, Enlightenment's famous for that. What about Legopolis? Isn't it the further they go into yes. all the multiple console rooms, the darker it gets? Yes, that is true. That yeah. is true. And it just looks really cool. Yeah, look, it, it, it does. Um, I want to mention the secondary console room that you had at number five on your list. Yes. If, if this was just the room itself... I would have it on my list, but okay. I really, I really loathe the central console 
that basically is this small little stand. You open a flap and there's some push buttons, just a few rows of coloured push buttons. And and that, that to me is just a little bit dull. I, I, I want... And I want a few more levers and a few more dials and, and, and just something a little bit more than a roll of push buttons. That, ah, that, okay. that unfortunately drops it down for okay. me. Well, well, I did call it a drinks cabinet, so... <laughs> yes, that, that's right. And, and, and again, you know, I would have seen that for the first time when I was, I don't know what age, but certainly under 10. And I had no idea what a shaving mirror was. So I thought that was just like a really strangely thinly designed central column. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so I generally thought that about the, the shaving mirror. Um, none of us have mentioned any of the Pertwee era consoles. Well, that that could be interesting in its own right, like when Pertwee takes the console out of the TARDIS and has it in his shed or his garage. That, that's kind of interesting. It, it is very interesting, and the setting for it in Ambassadors is, is, is quite cool. Sadly, by the time they've shifted it around a lot and it's got to Inferno, and the inner workings of the, the time rotor are literally just hanging by threads. And, and it's, it's very sad and dilapidated. It's a bit wobbly. Um, but he does get some nice gleaming consoles. I, I, I don't mind the um, the washing up bowl console room that he gets in Time Monster. And, and the Master gets a really cool central time rotor in that, doesn't he? Yes. Yes. Good point. Good point. I must admit, I didn't even think of that one for this. No, neither did I, and I kind of kind of regret that now. But um, you now the master has had some some very neat console rooms. Modern series, we've both gone for the Capaldi version, or in your case, the Smith Capaldi version. Mm. It, it starts with Smith, you know. It, it does. It's not a big change to Capaldi. Yeah. It's some interesting stuff that gets added, but it's not a huge change. Yeah, I, it, it's funny you said that because when you said it, I, th- I thought, oh, he's absolutely right. It it, it is the same one. But to me, I, I, I think of it as being very different because of the way it's filmed sure. and the way it's used. So you, you're absolutely right. Um, I don't dislike the Coral Tardis. I think it was a very interesting design to come back on. Well, you know what's interesting? When I was looking at the McGann movie set, I looked up some pictures when I was making my notes for this just to remind myself fully of what I was remembering. And replace the coral with metal, it actually has that sort of uh, shape yes. above the console. I thought, oh, that design sort of started there. It's not really an RTD special new thing. It, they, they basically did the same thing again, just in coral. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thinking about it, I, I like the, the, the TARDIS console. I'm not quite as big a fan of the room. Although mm. it is very clever that they've solved the whole doors problem by having police box doors actually in the, the console room itself yeah that was always interesting as a kid because wasn't it the novels tried to give you this idea that once you went through the TARDIS doors the police box doors you were actually walking across some chasm or in some sort of place that wasn't the console room before you got to the console room I seem to remember that in some novels yeah I don't know whether it was novels or just my own personal head cannon, but that, that was kind of how I felt it would be like you actually stepped out of the console room into some sort of airlock or lobby or, 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 mm. or space and and but then you have the ones where um i'm thinking of particularly uh colony in space is one example or pyramids of mars where the console doors actually open onto the location and very clearly they are console doors they're not police box doors like it's it's completely unworkable yeah, yeah um but but you know that's that's fine um final thing i just want to throw out there as an honorable mention is the peter cushing console room oh, which sure. is Nothing like any of the others. It hasn't got a central column at all, but it's no. got that really cool sink plunger that starts the TARDIS up. Uh, and yes. that really cool gramophone micro- uh, speaker thing that's the fault locator. So mm. lovely and bonkers. Uh, anything else from you, Rob? No, I'm, I'm spent. Excellent. Good. Well, we have covered a lot in that. So thank you for the topic. If you have topics, please do send them in. But now, yes. our topic for next time. Okay. And it is... Ooh, it's a worst. Ooh, we haven't done many of those. No, I think it's only our second. Top five, yeah. worst five Doctor Who decisions. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> There's a lot of material to work with there. It's a show we love. We, 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 we will have some loving fun with that one, I think. I almost started blurting them out. <laughs> <laughs> no, save it for next month. Save it for okay, next month. Okay, um, okay. But we are out of time, so until next month, I've been Dave. And I've been Rob. And we will make some lists soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.